welcome to our webinar on mastering asset accounting in sage uh, i am lahiru amarasekar one of the functional consultants working here at cilian and i am thrilled to deliver the webinar for you today uh, as we all know uh, managing assets is uh, not about keeping track of lot of numbers it's about making informed decisions that drive financial success However, uh, it needs a lot of effort and consistent work. Here we are focusing on how to unlock the potential of Sage 300 uh, related solutions to reduce the effort and maintain optimum asset accounting uh, records. Before moving forward with the webinar, uh, a quick note, uh, there will be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Uh, please gather your questions and ask during the sessions. I hope uh, all of you will contribute with your valuable insights as well. After all, uh, we are here to learn uh, together. Uh, before dive in, diving in, let's take a quick note at uh, what we have in the store today. The introduction to the webinar and then uh, I'll be moving on to the challenges of asset management, which uh, users would face uh, when uh, doing asset accounting. Then uh, we go into the asset management solution itself provided by norming uh, resource norming support support. And uh, then we dive deep into the asset accounting uh, features with a practical uh, demonstration. There are, I'll be putting some transactions on a test environments in our, our end and uh, I'll show how the results are generated. Then uh, we discuss on how seamlessly in integration can be done with the rest of the accounts, uh, asset, asset accounts with the rest of the financial details. And then we'll uh, move into the Q&A session. So uh, let's uh, not waste any more time. Without further ado, let's uh, dive into the webinar, Mastering Asset Accounting in Sage. First, uh, common challenges which organizations face when managing uh, asset accounts. See, maintaining accuracy and quality of data is a serious problem. Usually when uh, many different departments are involved and there's no proper solution for asset accounting, employees tend to keep records at department level. And uh, when something like audit comes, they try to compile them together to a central location and it is really troublesome. So uh, also if uh, Excel formats are being used, keeping track of the versions and updating the, them uh, would be really difficult and then managing the depreciation is also difficult because uh, depreciated depreciation is not a uh, expense where ca cash is out there's cash outflow uh, so especially when creating it manually and updating uh, it would be not possible uh, in a consistent consistent manner when there are a high number of uh, assets involved and also there's a significant gap between practical transaction and it being transferred to the company's balance sheet when there are uh, separate departments handling uh, asset accounting records. These often lead to a phenomenon called uh, phantom assets. These are assets which are physically disposed but still shows in the uh, balance sheet due to updating gaps and communication errors. It has been found out that they add, around, uh, add to around one quarter of all fixed assets. Then uh, correct valuation and depreciation should be uh, done and it's troublesome to do uh, with a manual system. Professionals need to identify a proper depreciation methodology and the methodology should be seamlessly integrated across all assets throughout the organization. With incorrect valuations, there can be many issues such as uh, overvaluing assets resulting in overstated depreciation, which uh, again require uh, high, higher value of insurance costs more than needed. So, and in some cases, users may need to keep multiple values for the same asset, and it would be also troublesome uh, uh, when there's no system involved. And then when, when there are records here and there and the overall quality of the records are low, uh, organization may struggle to comply with accounting standards at, as well as legal and tax, tax compliances. 
audit processes would take a lot would take a lot more time and uh, employees who comply da compile data need to be involved full time hindering the day to day operations and they, this would uh, lead to dysfunctional workplace and a uh, and high levels of stress and uh, costs then the next is the integration with the existing finances, especially due to elements such as depreciation and revaluations. Integrating the asset accounting into the remaining accounting is uh, troublesome. And finally, managing uh, security and data protection is troublesome in asset accounting as well. There should be no room for employees to change asset values through direct uh, access or altering depreciation records without proper approach because it it will uh, result in fraud and misuse and then uh, not all asset records should be available to all staff levels especially the asset values and uh, proper as, as access management methodology need to be there for seamless uh, business performance so let's dive into the solution provided by norming itself uh, norming asset manager or NAM uh, that we like to refer to uh, is a powerful complete asset management solution with Sage 300 DRP and it can be used to perform all asset accounting transactions and can be used to uh, do to handle other aspects such as asset maintenance, asset tracking and asset leasing as well. Uh, let me briefly go through the key go through key highlights of NAM. It integrates with Sage 300 ERP, uh, GL, AP, AR, and IC functions, and it supports all uh, Sage 300 related uh, databases. And it provides unlimited optional fields for asset register and transaction details. And it uh, actually provides a flexible numbering methodology for uh, fixed assets and barcode numbering options. And it also helps manage the asset construction progress and it also supports multi currency databases as well. For asset uh, maintenance, it uh, supports, uh, uh, supposed to keep uh, SLS and equipment maintenance options. And once again, it can be used to schedule maintenance activities and manage a maintenance expense. Uh, it can be used to manage asset lease contracts and, contracts and uh, billing process can also be handled through uh, norming asset management. Uh, finally, it uh, provides complete barcode based asset tracking facilities and it provides a multi-dimensional inquiry uh, and reporting functionalities as well. So uh, let's move into key features of norming asset management. NAM asset uh, accounting support all asset acquiring uh, transactions such as account, sorry, asset accounting transactions such as acquisition, depreciation, adjustment, impairment, disposal, and disposal split and merge functions as well. And it also provides a var variation of inquiry win windows uh, designated under AM assets. Uh, we'll discuss them further in the latter part of the webinar. And then under leasing, there are options to maintain lease contracts, create invoices, uh, and next in asset maintenance, there are options to run maintenance schedules, keep uh, SLA agreements in track, and uh, keep in track of uh, related maintenance vendors. And finally, asset tracking, uh, there are options to track the movement of assets based on IDs and barcode numbers. On today's webinar, however, we would uh, solely focus on the accounting function of assets as it's the it's having the highest number of applications. Uh, then let's move into the con basic configuration guidelines. Say this, uh, these are the basic system requirements which are needed for NAM. You need Sage 300 ERP resource manager and a land fact license is consumed when accessing NAM since it is uh, accessed through Sage. Uh, then uh, the database engine is also needed. And, uh, as discussed earlier, NAM supports all database en engines such as MySQL, Perversive SQL, and Oracle likewise. 
and these are the installation guidelines uh, installation is relatively simple you have to just have to run this uh, nam setup and then you have to go into data activation and activate the nam module then uh, you have to add the license before adding licenses you have, you have you have 30 days of trial period So then uh, let's briefly discuss how the setup of NAM can be used to fit specific organizational needs uh, categorized ba based on the industry. Say depreciation uh, methods which are used for manufacturing ind industry and service industry may be different since manufacturing industry uses complex machinery for production uh, for production. Methods such as uh, double declining balance is suitable, whereas for service industry, the simple uh, straight line method is suitable. In uh, NAM, you can actually customize the depreciation formula. Therefore, uh, any user requirement uh, in, related to depreciation can be implemented inside the uh, module. And then there are valuation differences in, in assets. Say, in terms of real estate industry, the value is rapid, uh, continuously increasing with a slow, slow phase uh, most of the time. But in uh, IT industry, there are variety of market factors affecting the value of the assets. Say these uh, kind of change differences can be accounted through NAM. Then when it comes to data security, uh, finance industry may need uh, much more security on assets compared to retail as NAM support all set security group configurations of Sage 300. Uh, it can be customized down to the smallest detail to provide optimum security. And uh, the next part is tax con considerations. Say in oil and gas industry, since these assets are used for uh, exploration and production uh, there may be needs to keep uh, separate values for tax purposes and uh, it can be also done by uh, nam module all right okay then uh, let's move into the demonstration where i'll i'll be going through the asset accounting transactions and uh, showing how to post them uh, in real time. Uh, here, however, I uh, will not be focusing most of uh, my effort onto the setup options because most of the setup options will be compiled by our Cilian staff. But uh, to explain things further in detail, I will be referring into the setup options as well. All right. Okay. Let me start off with acquisition, how to acquire assets. Here there are, uh, you can start by doing acquisition entries. It's similar to other Sage uh, 300 windows. If you open uh, acquisition entry, goes to a window like this, you can uh, pick this plus mark to go into a new acquisition batch. Here, uh, you have transaction type, a variable name transaction type. There are, you have several transaction types. Say new, tra new is where you acquire a new asset. Uh, what essentially happens is the asset gets recognized in the asset management module and relevant GL transactions will also be created. And then there's another transaction type called existing. And what essentially happens in this one is uh, when the asset is already recognized under the balance sheet, you can use this one. This creates a new asset, uh, adds to the asset register, but GL transactions are not created. And there's another option called new add-on. Say this, when new add-on is picked, you can see this uh, window uh, is uh, is different to the other uh, question window. Say if new add-on is picked, you there's a button to 
apply to assets. So you can add value to uh, an existing assets. This is uh, for scenarios such as say there is a building and you install an elevator to that building. And if so, the total value of the building would be increased and you can use this option to uh, record the transaction. And existing add-on is where, uh, once again, GL transactions are not created, but uh, the same thing happens uh, compared to new add-on. So if you pick new and Then there's another very important variable name, a question code. Here you have to specify from which method the asset is being acquired. There are several methods to acquire assets in uh, NAM. I'll uh, refer into the setup and uh, explain briefly what are the methods that are available to you. Uh, it can be specified under the AM set of question codes. I have created only one acquisition code, but uh, you can create several acquisition codes depending on your requirement. Say if you pick a general ledger, it asks for an acquisition clearing account. What essentially happens is the uh, asset control accounts get debited and this acquisition clearing account gets credited when you uh, enter asset acquisition transactions. And if you choose account payable, there are multiple options in account payable as well. And if you pick create uh, by creating AP invoice, you have to give AP clearing account and default vendor uh, once you pick this option. What essentially happens is Sage creates a new AP invoice when you are uh, adding as a tech question transaction to this default vendor uh, picking this uh, AP clearing account. And there's a option to tick do not create GL transaction and if this is ticked what happens is the GLs which are relevant to the asset uh, acquisition is not created only the uh, aim acquisition batch and the asset is recognized under the asset management module but no GLs are created and if you pick this option creating a miscellaneous payment uh, it creates a miscellaneous uh, payment in the AP module, uh, picking this uh, default bank code that you give. And then there's another option to co convert the AP invoice. Uh, what essentially happens is uh, you can pick an invoice that is already created and you can convert them into as a tech question transactions. And there's another option to plus allot allocated tax uh, here. What happens if you pick uh, this option is the tax value also is capitalized under the asset value. So those, those are the AP related uh, transactions on uh, acquisition. And there is another option to acquire with inventory control. Say this is where to uh, convert the stocks to assets. You can uh, convert the existing uh, stocks to fixed assets. You can have uh, these two options. You can you single assets asset per line it is where one line creates one assets and uh, multiple assets per quantity if you specify quantities in different lines it creates multiple assets likewise and uh, there's uh, inventory control related asset acquisition and once again you can use purchase order related transactions to acquire assets as well so you can use purchase order receipts and purchase order invoice as well so again, you can pick this option. And if a duplicate PO checking is uh, ticked, uh, ticked, you can cannot use uh, duplicate POs. And once again, there's another option to capitalize additional costs. Say in uh, purchase order transactions, you can specify additional costs. And if this option is ticked, additional cost is also added to the asset value. And uh, similarly, project and job costing can also be used to as a tech question. What essentially happens is uh, you can use a fully uh, expensed project and job costing related transaction and it can be picked to uh, acquire an asset. The value will be converted to the asset account. And asset maintenance can also be used to acquire assets. Uh, once again, asset maintenance transactions 
can be converted into uh, assets. These are the main options that uh, as a tech question used, but most of the time uh, this is the commonly used option. Uh, let me go back to a Mac question. Okay, uh, then let me show you by entering a new transaction. Enter test acquisition. Here you can uh, specify these variables and create a asset ID. Say these cost centers, categories, locations, and groups have to be pre uh, previously defined from the setup. Uh, and based on those, you can generate an ID. Say if I pick the locations and other variables like this. And it uh, gives out the auto number. And based on that, you can create the ID. This is how the ID gets created. And uh, you can actually customize how this ID is being created. Uh, it is done from AM setup. Let me quickly go back to AM setup and show you from options. The segment tab, you have that as a, as a tidy creation options. Uh, you can uh, define the link of the uh, length of the segment, sorry, and uh, which uh, which is uh, where it links to. And here I have defined three segments. Uh, based on that, as a tech question ID is getting created with three segments. And here uh, you have to pick a template. What essentially happens when you pick a template is you can record the values which are needed for account sets, uh, categories, and other stuff in this template. And if you pick them, uh, pick the template here, all those values directly come into the acquisition uh, window. As a tech question, templates also can be defined uh, from setup. Uh, let me quickly go into setup again and show you. Here, there's a window named templates. I only have one template right now, but uh, here you can define all the variables and uh, save it. And once you pick uh, this template from as a tech question, it automatically gets loaded. Now I just have to give a value. Say I picked 5 million uh, as the value. And then you add. The document number is created. And uh, similar to other entries in Sage, you can uh, go into the batch list and post it. Yeah. Now uh, the asset. Uh, designated under the asset ID uh, similar to this one is uh, recognized in the uh, asset register. Also, there's another uh, option uh, here in a Mac question to name WIP transfer. Here, this is used for transfer the asset values between WIP and WIP values between assets. Say. If you open this one, you can pick the transfer type WIP to asset or asset to WIP. What essentially happens is if you pick something similar to this one, the asset account gets credited and the WIP related WIP accounts gets debited. So you can specify these asset accounts and WIP accounts in account sets in uh, setup uh, and all the uh, assets needs to have 
an asset control account and WIP account. Let me briefly go into setup again and show you where it's, set, it's being set up. In account sets, if you say this one, this is the asset control account and this is the uh, related WIP account that is uh, previously set up. The, that is about uh, AM acquisition. Let me move on into AM adjustment. From this one, you can actually uh, do uh, several adjustments to assets. Let me start off by describing AM adjustment entry. Here, once again, you have to go into a new adjustment. You can uh, give the asset ID here. Say if you pick this one. And here there are several types of adjustments that you can do. You can change category, cost center, location, and account set. Uh, likewise, uh, there are so, so many things that you can do, uh, but today I'm not going to go into them one by one. I'm, uh, I'll show posting one transaction. Say here, let's uh, let us uh, change the category of this asset. Say before changing the category, uh, let's let me show you what's the category th that it is currently having. You can go into asset register. On the books tab, so in the master tab, it has the category of uh, BLD buildings, and uh, you can uh, actually do the adjustments for this uh, this one and change it to something else. Let me circle back to asset adjustment. If you pick category, say we enter. from BLD to e equipment. Then you have to pick the dates correctly and uh, after that you can add. Once again, it's added to adjustment batch lists, category adjustment. You can uh, post it. It's posted. Now you can circle back into that asset register. And check on the category. We change from seven. Now the category has been successfully changed to uh, from BLD to equipment. Similar something, uh, similar adjustments can be done for all assets if required. And here there's another option called another option called bulk adjustment. Here you can do for do the changes which you require for multiple assets per time. Say if you are having uh, thousands or Thousands of assets, uh, you can actually go from one by one to do the changes you require, and you can use this option. This has the selection and chosen asset steps. Uh, this actually supports to uh, select the assets which you require. Say you can uh, pick the adjustment category, and you can actually go into cost centers and uh, these variables to. Uh, build up a custom selection formula. Say, say you pick cost centers, and if you pick like this,
you can uh, use this uh, these variables to pick custom formulas and also uh, if these variables that doesn't uh, are not uh, supporting you to select the assets that uh, according to your requirements you can use the, these variables as well so you can uh, use these variables and add them into the below table and deter develop a custom formula for you to uh, select the assets which you require say if you want you to use that account set you can add here you can pick the value PLD. and then you can add another variable say description and you can pick the description as buildings now uh, based on this criteria here based on this criteria the chosen assets will be displayed on uh, this section and you can review those uh, assets and uh, go to process uh, to create bulk adjustment batches uh, and uh, there you can use this option to uh, do multiple adjustments uh, sorry uh, the adjustment for multiple assets and let me go into am assets this is uh, actually an inquiry window uh, you cannot actually do any changes to the am uh, transactions from here but uh, you can uh, investigate what has happened from this window uh, down to the smallest detail. So first of all, you have the asset register. This is where the main main details are visible. If you open it. And if you pick one asset. the acquisition date to cost center and category all the details which are related to the asset uh, comes to this master tab and this us uh, support tab uh, means uh, it's actually not a commonly used one but uh, it's there to support us tax tax system uh, it's also since it's also supported by nam uh, you can install it to uh, <coughs> get this window and there's a tab named book here you have the value details of asset say stated is normal in the sense it's active and if it is disposed it comes as disposed and the method here is the depreciation method and depreciation periods and all the other relevant details are coming here and in the this table you can see the purchase cost current net book value after the depreciation is uh, reduced and if there was any impairment what's the Im accumulated impairment values uh, all the value details can be uh, viewed from this table and if the asset is being used for production the production related details you can view from this production tab and this mis it's for miscellaneous information it also provides some uh, miscellaneous information about the asset say if the asset has units say you can actually <coughs> have several units for one assets as long as the netbook value of all units are added into the net, uh, final netbook value uh, provided by provided here in the books tab you can have multiple units here it's only it, it has no units only one asset and uh, insurance policies dates and stuff like that you can actually use this uh, tab to record and if you use any optional fields in the asset register uh, you can use this optional fields tab to record those values and also you can uh, have several attachments for assets as well you can attach images certificates and documents and stuff like that you can use the uh, this tab to do that once again, as I uh, mentioned earlier, if there are several units for the asset, uh, those units come here with respective values.
uh, then let's move into the asset inquiry window here you can inquire the uh, transactions uh, for a period or for a range of assets or based on these variables say if you pick the acquisition date from uh, 2019 Jan to 31st December and uh, tick this option all the asset uh, related transaction related to that period uh, a question related to this period are coming and if you you can actually uh, filter out others if you uh, if you know the assets you need to inquire on uh, if you pick like this the details would be changed and once again uh, you can use uh, select by these filters to uh, uh, filter them further and uh, only view the information which you require and once again if you go into one of these assets and pick open it uh, it is directed to asset register here yeah, to asset register and uh, it supports uh, to inquire the assets which are available and then uh, there's another uh, uh, inquiry window named asset Ac uh, activities inquiry window here for a one asset you can inquire what are the things that happen to the asset say asset may be revalued it may be depreciated and uh, it may be impaired something uh, so those things can be viewed from this window let me show by choosing one asset if you choose this asset you can actually uh, pick the transaction types uh, if you want to inquire on if you pick all everything is going to come and if you pick this one you can see that this is acquired and it's depreciated for two months and it's impaired for one month and it's been split all this information you can simply view by uh, picking on this uh, window and once again if you uh, select one and pick this document option it goes to the related document say this here a question entry transaction it directly navigates to that acquisition related transaction and similar thing can be uh, happen is there for depreciation as well you go into the depreciation uh, sheet and here the next one is the master component inquiry here uh, you can actually have multiple components for the same asset and if there are multiple components for uh, one asset it's get uh, displayed here say this asset is the main asset and it, uh, the 001 designated asset is the component and if you you can actually designate it from the asset register let, let me show you if you go into here and pick component of and pick the main asset it will uh, directly get uh, transported into that window and you can uh, view the component wise view uh, from this component master component inquiry window it's extremely similar to the asset register only the component details can be uh, viewed additionally from this window and pjc equipment mapping uh, also is another inquiry window and uh, if the asset is tagged in any uh, any uh, pjc related transactions you can actually view the details from here but uh, here i don't have any assets that are tagged in pjc transactions uh, and then there's another window called import assets wizard this is where you can uh, use the import asset wizard to import uh, multiple assets simultaneously here once you open it uh, it asks whether you have a template or whether you don't have a template for uh, asset importation here if you uh, what you should do is if you don't uh, usually when you start you don't have a, a template no, you have to create a template based on the current asset and uh, then it can be used to add details uh, details and then uh, it can be imported into the uh, <coughs> asset register if you pick this one 
and next you have to pick a sample asset id say if i pick this one does uh, select the book and uh, here only one book is there uh, and You can uh, go into like this and finish. It's on asset. Uh, it's not installed anyhow. The uh, Excel format will be created, and uh, with that Excel format, you can add the new assets to the bottom part of that Excel and then use the same uh, import asset wizard to uh, add those assets back into the AA module. All right. All right, uh, then uh, let me go into AM depreciation. This is where the depreciation can be done for all assets. Here, let me start off with uh, depreciation proje projection. This is a new uh, handy feature, which is there for NAM. You can actually use this to project the depreciation values which are gonna come. And if there are any differences uh, from the uh, required, from required values, you can actually go in de to detail uh, to the calculation and see where uh, see why the depreciation value differ and you can adjust those and then come back to come back and use this feature again. Uh, this is there to uh, make the details accurate. See, you can actually use it and uh, correct the values if there are any mistakes. Say, uh, let me start off by th that function. Say, when you run uh, AM depreciation projection, it's uh, the window is exactly similar to AM depreciation. Here, uh, you have you have to pick the uh, depreciation period. Say here, 2023 third period uh, is picked, and uh, if you do don't use any filters here all the assets which uh, which needs to depreciate for this period uh, it considers and depreciates and if you pick one asset uh, if you want to depreciate only one asset you have to go in and pick the asset uh, which you need to be uh, which you need to depreciate say if you process like this without adding filters It creates a depreciation projection like this for all these assets. Here, I don't have many assets, therefore uh, only a few depreciation uh, values are coming. But if there are thousands of assets, it, this takes a little while, say sometimes it takes around uh, 15 to 20 minutes to run depreciation projections and depreciation batches. Uh, and projection depreciation value, projected netbook value, everything comes. And you can ins uh, inspect these values to uh, see whether there are any uh, differences from the values which you want. And you can in inquire values from there. And if everything is correct, you can go into depreciation. You can uh, enter a description. Okay, the big process, uh, book uh, depreciation calculated, and a depreciation batch uh, will be generated. You can view the depreciation batches from depreciation batch list similar to other batch list. Here, what I created just now, test depreciation, it's there. You can open it. 
and see what are the uh, assets that have affected. Here you can see all the assets that have been highlighted in the depreciation projection. Uh, they have been uh, reflected here. And if the values are correct, you can set it to uh, ready to post and post similar to uh, other transactions. Uh, those are the depreciation related functions and then there's a, another function called depreciation reversal and depreciation reversal batch. It is, it is there to reverse the depreciation values if the, uh, if the uh, depreciation values have been recorded incorrectly. You can reverse the depreciation value and correct what's uh, wrong and then repost the depreciations. It's entirely similar to the depreciation uh, normal depreciation window. If you run this, the record that I have created just now is reversed. And once again, all the category and uh, cost center, all the variables are there to uh, support you, filter out, support to filter out the unrelated assets. And uh, let me go into AM disposal. This is where the disposal of an asset can be done. Let me start by going with the disposal entry. Here, once again, you can uh, go to a new batch and you can pick the asset that you want to dispose. We dispose something else. What I have acquired just now. You can give a description. Here also there is a disposal variable name disposal type uh, and uh, disposal type uh, related codes should be created. Let me go into the setup and show which are the types uh, that I that you have in uh, NAM. If you go into the setup uh, in uh, disposal types, this is the disposal type that we have right now. Uh, the first one is similar to a question is the general uh, disposal via general ledger. They are need to specify a disposal uh, clearing account. What essentially happens so is uh, asset account control accounts get credited and this account gets debited. And you can actually use AR invoice uh, option to uh, dispose uh, uh, assets as well. What happens is uh, Sage automatically creates an AR invoice uh, when the asset account asset is being disposed. Uh, and you can actually use IC receipt option as well. What happens in this option is you can actually turn the uh, fixed assets back into the general inventory uh, by specifying a location and a disposal clearing account. These are the three options that are available uh, to dispose. And uh, let me go ahead with the general ledger option and dispose one account, that one asset, the asset that I have acquired right now before doing when doing the acquisition entry. If you pick add. Task to pick the disk. Uh, Posting date. This added. Once again, uh, you can go into disposal batch list. This is the disposal that I have generated. And go into ready to post and post. Processing completed and as it is disposed. So you can uh, go into the uh, asset register to see the status if needed. Then you can go into a asset. Let's 
set register status comes as disposed once you do the disposal uh, then uh, once again there's the option to bulk this uh, to do bulk disposal it's similar to bulk adjustment entry therefore i'm not gonna go into detail here you can uh, pick the uh, selection criteria similar to the uh, bulk adjustment entry and use this below table if needed to select the assets and uh, if nothing is selected then uh, if nothing is selected uh, all the assets which are ready to dis be disposed comes to uh, comes to the chosen side here only two are coming but all the assets uh, which are ready to be disposed comes to the uh, chosen site once the disposal type and the disposal clearing count is picked. If not, you can use that uh, selection uh, methodologies provided uh, in NAMP to select the exact, exactly the assets that you need to uh, dispose. And let me go into AM impairment. And in the impairment, there's the uh, impairment processing batches and impairment processing entries. Here you can uh, record the impairments uh, for one assets. So if you go into a new batch, you can actually pick impairment or impairment reversal from the same window. Let me show you by uh, adding an impairment. Say, if you use this one, once again, it has to correct the Wait a second, I'll start by uh, changing the date first. you go to the asset it has already has an accumulated impairment of 400 and you can enter the remaining uh, impairment that you need say 600 and go to add close and once again if you go into the um, assets is the asset that I picked. It has an accumulated uh, impairment of 400, uh, 400. The batch that I have created just now is not posted and it has a netbook value of this, uh, this much and I have uh, now created an impairment for 600 uh, and after posting these value values would be changed. Let me show you by posting. So again, it comes to a uh, impairment processing batch. This is the one that I created. Posting completed. Now accumulated impairment comes into 1000 and the network value is also reduced. Similar to that one, you can add impairments for all assets if required. And uh, let me go into a merge split option. This is there to split assets and uh, merge assets. Say, so let me start by doing a merge entry. Close others. Okay, 
so you can actually merge several assets to uh, come up with a new asset so if you go into new batch new batch you can pick assets to merge say if you use seven pick merge then you can use nine and pick merge and you can tick this option to retain that asset id which you require say 009 you can retain that asset id or you can uh, designate the new asset id for the new asset so i'm going to use a new asset id you can go into the master and click on this item to uh, generate the asset id similar to the acquisition batch you can give the variable details and go to create id it creates an id if you can provide save awesome here you have to give the methods and other day variables Here, the last depreciation period should be adjusted because I have uh, picked that uh, because I picked this value incorrectly. And then uh, you can go into the merge uh, batch list and post this batch to uh, merge these assets and come up with a new come up with the new asset ID. And the opposite can be done for split transact from split batch list. Say if you go into split entry, I'm not going to merge the asset because I, I'm not having uh, many assets in the system right now. Uh, and if you go into split uh, transaction and you can pick an asset and you can uh, designate uh, the number of splits that you need say if you pick two it splits for equally two uh, assets say initially the asset was having 5 million and it splits for 2.5 million and based uh, with 50 percent split and you can actually go here and adjust the details to uh, split according to your requirement and if you pick process, the, these split transactions are being generated. And uh, if you pick save, saved You have to specify the last depreciation uh, method, uh, one as well. Now, uh, this one uh, you can post it to uh, split the assets to split the asset to two segments like specified here. And yeah. Uh, 
with those options uh, let me move back into the presentation so after entering those details you have to uh, ensure the integration with uh, accounts say these are the common practices that you need to do to ensure uh, the integration with the remaining accounts after posting one am batch uh, irrespective of the batch type that you want you have to check whether the, the, the gl transactions are generated for this batch and uh, if they are generated you have to post them promptly to reflect the uh, change in the gl say for this one if you go into the AMA question, you can use AMP Reddit processing create GL batch to check whether the question batches are being generated. Say in a question here, these uh, three are generated. This one is not, and you can use to process and create transactions like this. And from general ledger. from batch list you can pick am and uh, all the related batch uh, gl batches would come and you can inspect the values and post them promptly and then uh, periodic reconciling of assets listing report uh, against the netbook values of gl balance uh, should be done say you can uh, view the asset module asset balancers from here. So if you go into AM reports, asset accounting from the asset listing report, if you print like this, uh, this net value uh, is for each and every asset and uh, you have to uh, you have to add these net values and reconcile it against the gl values so gl values you can view in the normal man manner from uh, transaction listing or trial balance reports uh, you have to go into these details and uh, reconcile with the am listing netbook value if there are differences usually if the batches are posted uh, promptly the differences won't come and uh, there you need to do timely depreciation when handling assets they uh, when there are high number of assets uh, involved and if there are it should be done for many months also uh, system generates the depreciation but you uh, face trouble when uh, <coughs> when uh, inspecting the values for depreciation say depreciation might be wrong and not according to a requirement and you may not know because there are so many depreciation records and you have to also do am year in process properly uh, to uh, manage am operations say year end let me quickly go back to my demo similar to uh, other parts of sage you can do the year in processing from here year in processing if you process this one uh, you cannot post uh, transactions for the 2022 period uh, once you complete all the transactions for the period only, you should process this year in. Uh, and if there are tax options also, uh, the year end should be processed for tax as well. Say, let me briefly go into the setup to discuss about tax options. In setup options, if you If you pick this tax option, it allows you to uh, record a multiple set of sets of values for the same asset. Say, uh, since it is not co configured now, I, it doesn't allow to configure. Anyhow, if this uh, tax option is picked, uh, it allows you to uh, 
pick values for the keep separate records for the same uh, assets and uh, it should be processed differently co compared to the other EA. And uh, those are the best practices for integration with the uh, accounts and uh, let me show some of the successful cases which uh, Zillion was involved in implementation for Maldives. Uh, we have MAWC and Stelco, and from Fiji, we have Ramsami and Sons, Lukala and Coma Resorts. And from Sri Lanka, we have Koko Lanka and Finlays, which are currently running uh, NAM uh, successfully. And uh, with th those things, uh, the webinar is uh, at it at its end these are the things that we have discussed so far uh, we have discussed common challenges which organizations face when managing asset accounting and we have done uh, introduction to the norming asset management module highlighted key features and discussed basically uh, configuration guidelines and uh, discussed how uh, setup options can be configured to uh, suit different organizational needs and we discussed key features in norming asset accounting in detail and uh, we discussed best practices uh, that require to ensure integration with the accounts and finally uh, we, we've seen some successful uh, real world use cases for NAM and uh, with that uh, the webinar comes to an end uh, if there are any questions, please uh, ask. And thank you for your time. Also, please, if there are any questions, uh,